welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Today in the show, we welcome back Leanne Mendelbaum. She is the founder of The No Nut Traveler, and she wrote the Kevin MD article, When Celebrities Attack Children with Food Allergies. Leanne, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for having me again. We'll get into your article in a little bit, but for those who didn't get a chance to listen to our first episode, can you just briefly share your story and journey to where you are today? Sure. When um, my son was about eight years old, we were traveling home from a family vacation and another family in the immediate lounge area was made aware of the fact that my son had a life-threatening peanut allergy. And they asked us politely to move because this family was going to be consuming in the airport lounge um, peanuts and Mm -hmm. no problem. I actually really appreciated the heads up. We moved only her children moved with us and started throwing peanuts up in the air, missing them on purpose from catching them in their mouth and then crushing them and pushing the dust towards my son. And I went back over to the woman and asked her if they were going to be on our flight. Sure enough, they were. So then I was still very calm, went up to the airline help desk and asked them if they would just make an announcement that there was a child in row eight that had an anaphylactic peanut allergy. And um, they said, no, they said the crew didn't want to do it. They didn't have to tell me why the last manager in the chain in Denver said, if you think he's going to die, just don't get on the plane. At which point my son, who had never worried about his food allergy, became hysterical and said, you can't put me on the plane. I have my whole life ahead of me. I'm not going to die. So we didn't get on that plane, but I came home. I started researching the fact that other people had gone through something similar and much more disconcerting, actually being kicked off planes, not Mm -hmm. voluntarily leaving. And I began to collect stories. I founded an advocacy website. I started speaking now all over the world on this topic. And then I started writing for various publications, including yours, because I felt like our voices weren't being heard. I may not be the voice of the 32 million Americans of food allergies, but I provide a perspective that I hope physicians and other people alike get get a little more of a window into the insight and in the heart of minds of people that are living with this life-threatening condition and what we face and, you know, create a little more empathy and compassion as people go through life with these conditions. Now, I know you've been an, an advocate on behalf of food allergy patients for a while, Don, and you have a wonderful platform. Has things changed since that story with your son? Yes, because part of um, my website's purpose was to collect testimonials. And one of the testimonials led to a case being taken on by a phenomenal attorney I work with named Mary Vargas, who's a disability rights attorney. And we brought this testimonial along with food allergy research and education to the DOT and filed a complaint. And that complaint resulted in a ruling that A, labeled food allergies as a disability, which had never been done under DOT bylaw. And now if you disallow someone from pre-boarding an aircraft to clean up from the mess from the passengers sat there before so that they're less likely to have any sort of reaction by encountering their allergen, you are actually violating DOT bylaws. So it is now a right um, for food allergy passengers coming to the United States and boarding any plane in the United States, the ability to pre-board. And that mitigates a lot of the risk and that came from us sharing our stories. So, you know, I always say to people, if you think one person can't make a difference, you can. I mean, you need a community, you need to connect with others, but you know, there's there's been a lot of positive change, a lot to go, but you know, take the small victories, I always say. I mean, I'm I'm thrilled with that. I sat down and cried for like two hours in my car because I couldn't believe that. Because Mary and I had been working on this for years Mm -hmm. and you know, she's like, this is a long shot. This is, and then, you know, we, we did it and it has changed everything because naming food allergies, a disability in the air, that's our stepping stone. We go from there and we will. All right. Let's transition now to the Kevin Emmy article that you wrote. It's titled yeah. when celebrities attack children with food allergies. Now, for those who didn't get a chance to read your article, can you just walk my audience through it and share the story of why you decided to write it? You know, I've written for you before on how people in prominent spaces, whether it's the entertainment industry, the movie industry, the news industry, they just feel that food allergies are okay, even though it's a legitimate medical condition to make fun of. And I've always said this perpetuates the abuse. And Bette Midler got on Twitter and she's got Mm. 2 million followers. So that's why it really struck me. And she basically said to 
sink it down in a nutshell, no pun intended, you know, vaccinate or I'm bringing the jiffy. So like, if you can't bring peanut butter into school, then, you know, you can't send your unvaccinated child. They have nothing to do with each other, but it has been years, years of people likening not vaccinating children to not sending in peanut butter. And there's, it's such a false comparison. And what really upset me is that there were a lot of ha ha, ha ha, yeah, you got it, bet. I'm bringing the peanuts. You know, like why take Target food, food out? There's no research out there that asserts that parents of children with food allergies or adults with food allergies are less likely to vaccinate, none. What there is evidence out of there that was presented, I believe in the 2020 ACAAI college meeting is that food allergy parents and children alike are bullied and embarrassed and have anxiety due to their food allergy. So bet like plays on that. And I'm sure it wasn't intentional, but this, this is what happens when you don't understand your words and what they're saying. You know, we get it from both ends of the spectrum. The people that like, that don't want to vaccinate say, I'm trying to protect what's going into my child's body, just like you're trying to protect what's going into your child's body. And the people that vaccinate say, I'm vaccinating my child. And, you know, you want me to protect your child. You have to vaccinate too. Neither one of those has anything to do with having a food allergy. A food allergy is a condition you're often born with. Sometimes it comes on an adult onset, but either way, it's not something you choose. You don't opt in or opt out. There is no vaccination for a food allergy. So we're not like walking around with a known treatment and not using it. It's a complete false equivalency. And it leads to these situations, whether it's on the ground or the air, where people just feel it's okay to have food allergies as a punchline. And it's really not. And it leads to disconcerting, you know, bullying situations. And, and I've had enough. So I entered into the vaccine debate where I never really wanted a place because it's, it's not a vaccine debate. Actually, I, I entered in to try to remove food allergy from the vaccine debate. So when Bette Midler posted that tweet, tell me what some of the response was, you know, from, from a variety of angles. Oh, spot on, you know, you've got it. It's, this is exactly right. Oh, you know, I'm laughing my you know, off because this is just hysterical. It's just right. Yeah. Those parents with children who think they, you know, there's all these like mothers of children, you know, it's just the helicopter parents. It's the same ones that aren't vaccinating. I mean, it's just not true. Then you had food allergy parents, rightly so, I, I believe saying, you know, look, my, this is a picture of my son when you bring the jiffy and they're showing someone intubated in a hospital, you know, and then you had some people saying COVID's dangerous, food allergies are dangerous. They have nothing to do with each other you know, be nice to each other. You know, it was a wide variety, but I would say the majority were agreeing with her. And Mar and the reason actually it caught my attention is because Martina Navratilova retweeted it. She took it down actually after getting a lot of heat from the food allergy community. Beth's tweet is still standing. Um, but my son is an avid tennis player and it just upset me because he looks up to her and she, uh, during women's week at school, this was his hero. And he did a whole project and made a doll of her. It was many, many years ago, but he's now a nationally ranked USTA player. And, you know, it, it just really upset me that someone in the tennis world, I was really heartened that, that she took it down, but, but that's dug her, dug her feet in. And I just think that if we don't call people out, we normalize the abuse. I've said this many times when I've called out different um, people from walks of life in, in articles I've written on your site. And I, I stand by that. There has to be a third rail where it's not okay to make fun of someone with a legitimate medical condition and put them in harm's way. Now you mentioned some other examples of celebrities who target those with food allergies. So for those who didn't read prior articles on my site, what are some of the other examples of celebrities or people with prominent platforms who target those with food allergies? What comes to mind is there was um, a host of one of the morning news shows that went into a store that sold lots of nuts and he thought he was being really funny and he's just like, oh, EpiPen me now. And then he stuck a fake EpiPen in his neck. A, it's, that's not where it goes. I understand he was trying to be, be humorous, but it also sort of says, it's okay if you give someone a little bit of the peanut because all they have to do is use that auto injector. And, you know, unfortunately in my advocacy position, one of the hardest parts for me as a parent has been meeting parents who have lost children to trace amounts where the auto injector either didn't work, wasn't given early enough, 
just too much of the allergen, it's not funny. It, it, it leads to other people thinking, oh, I'm just going to, you know, give a smear of this. There's uh, a teacher that had a banana shoved on her bathroom uh, in her classroom door and she's anaphylactic banana ended up in, in the hospital. There was a child in the United Kingdom that had cheese thrown at him. He died. I mean, yes, these are egregious examples, but there are uh, consequences to these words. And, you know, we, we need not to make fun in this way and stigmatize people with food allergies because it, it, it leads to people being hurt or anxiety or hiding the condition. And that in itself could have them not tell friends one day that they have the food allergy because they're embarrassed and then they inadvertently get exposed. And then, then you have a bad consequence and you can't come back. You can't come back at all. And the other thing with the whole vac vaccine debate is, is that um, when parents ask not for a specific food and it's not just peanut butter, when my son was younger, there was a child in his kindergarten who had a contact dairy anaphylactic allergy. And not, none of us in the class sent in what he was allergic to. It just wasn't worth it. I mean, it wasn't peanuts. It, it didn't matter what it was. I mean, why would you want to harm someone? But when someone is that young, kindergarten, when you ask a school not to allow something into a classroom, it's often because kids do not understand the consequences of their actions. And how can they? They're five. You know, and people who are have children without food allergies, they don't understand how hard it is to like convince a young child how to be careful, how to read a label. We're not with them all the time. It's, it's scary. It's, and then it becomes even scarier, I find, for some of the adults, especially the ones that travel, because they look at you like, oh, you're not little whatever. You don't, you're not small. You don't have a mom with you. I don't have to not serve nuts around you. You'll be fine. You know, and then that that anxiety and, you know, it's a legitimate medical condition. It can lead to tragic consequences and needs to be respected. End of story. And it doesn't belong in a vaccine debate for COVID or any other vaccine. We're talking to Leanne Mendelbaum. She's the founder of the No Nut Traveler. And she wrote to Kevin in the article, when celebrities attack children with food allergies. Well, Bette Midler made that connection between vaccines and food allergies. What is your perspective on vaccines and specifically the COVID vaccine? My son, um, when he was younger, had um, seizures from high fevers. He would get high fevers often after a vaccination. He's had all his childhood vaccinations safely. He's also had a drug allergy reaction, and that was scary. And he's got his food allergy. And we vaccinated with COVID and we vaccinated safely. And how we chose to do it is we waited for one of the local hospitals, not, not a walk in CVS, not that there's anything wrong with doing it that way, but our comfort level was to be, you know, observed extra, which they do for anyone with an, any anaphylactic allergy anyway, and to be inside that hospital in case we needed it. The process was smooth. All he had was a sore arm. Our biggest worry was actually, um, scheduling it in between national tennis tournaments so that, you know, it didn't affect his game and, we went on with our lives and we posted, I actually posted about it on my uh, No Not Travel website, which has about 22,000 followers. And the response was overwhelmingly positive. People thanked me, people said that they now felt stronger in going and getting it for their own child. It also um, had other people sharing their stories with far more allergies than my son and successfully getting this vaccine. There were people who had younger kids and said, you know, it's not here yet. I can't wait. Your story makes me feel so hopeful. So, uh, you know, I actually did not have one negative comment. I, I will say that I said I would take negative comments down because the point of the post was not to have a pro con vaccine debate, but was to share our positive experience and have others share the same. So I was really, really happy to see that. And it, it even like gave me more of a oomph to this article with Bette Midler, like, no, we are not more likely not to vaccinate. It's absurd. We don't belong in this debate. We may have more questions. We may want to, you know, see lists of ingredients and, you know, do a little research and talk to our own physician. But that, I don't think that should be dismissed uh, at all as being anti-vaccine at all. It just means that we may need a little more encouragement some of us, you know, and some of us not. And my final question, what's your take home message that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience? Don't put food allergies in a category. It doesn't belong. We have enough trouble with people making fun of us 
uh, in everyday life and we don't need it. We don't want it. We don't deserve it. Don't make fun of food allergies, period. You know, get a little education, read some of my Kevin MD articles to give you a little perspective. Maybe you can develop a little more empathy and compassion. It's not the worst condition to live with. It's not the easiest condition to live with either. And we have to rely on other people. That's what makes it so difficult. It's, it's not just me keeping my child safe. I have to worry about the school keeping my child safe, his friends, wherever he goes, he has to advocate for himself. So give that person just a little extra education wise on and what they're dealing with. And for physicians, if we have a few more questions, give us some time. We just need, there's a lot of good studies out there now saying that, you know, COVID vaccine is safe for those with food allergies. And that's not a reason to skip it. So you know, take the time to share those studies so that you can help allay somebody's concerns. Don't dismiss them. Um, when you dismiss them, you create a skeptic. You create someone who's going to go maybe do some research that doesn't include their doctor. And, you know, that's not going to help the situation we're in. So just treat us with respect and give us information. And the rest of the, rest of the audience that doesn't know a lot about food allergies, uh, read some of my Kevin MD articles ab ab about what we face and about increasing awareness. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised that we're not acting skeptics, we're not anti-science. We just, we just want a little respect and help in keeping our kids and adults alive and healthy and out of the hospital, especially at this time. Leanne, thank you so much for coming back on the show and sharing your time and insight. Thank you for having me and giving um, the food allergy patient a voice.